Now we all at one point in our life have to study, but have we ever learned how to exactly study? Think about it. Have we ever learned how to learn? Most of us are given information and we need to figure out a way to learn it by ourselves. No school, no institution teaches us exactly how to memorize content or how to take content and input that into our long-term memory. So in this video, I wanna give you guys a quick breakdown on a very widely researched publication that gives compelling research on what are the two top ways that students should learn. Now in this article, they break down the top 10 most widely known study techniques between students from highlighting, rereading, summarizing, active recall, space repetition, elaborative integration, and the like. Now Donlosky actually organizes every single one of these into three different categories. One is low utility, which means it literally sucks. One is moderate utility, which means it's good, but it's not as good as the high utility ones. And finally, they organize a group into high utility, which is the most widely known, best effective way to study for students. Now the timestamps for everything I'm going to discuss in this video will be highlighted right here. Now that's actually funny because the first thing I'm gonna be discussing is highlighting and why students are making a huge mistake when they're highlighting. The second thing that I'm gonna discuss is rereading and how rereading actually is not effective at all. Now the third thing I'm also gonna discuss, which is one of the higher utility ones, is space repetition and exactly what space repetition will be described later in the video. Now, before we get started with the video, I'm gonna ask you guys something super, super important. Smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. So without any further ado, let's get started on the first one, which is highlighting. Now there's a very interesting article that discusses how ineffective highlighting is. So essentially there was a research study that took two sets of students. One was a control group that were not given any highlighting materials and they were told to read a passage and to try to understand as much as they could from the passage and they could reread it as much as they wanted. Then there was a second group called the active highlighting group. And in this group, the researchers told the students that they should read the article and only highlight what they think is important. They gave each of these students one hour to either reread the articles in group one or in group two to actively highlight the articles. Once they finished, one week later, they called the students back and they told the control group that they had 10 minutes to reread the article. Then they told the active highlighting group that they had 10 minutes to reread the highlights that they made. Then they tested them on a 54 question multiple choice test and you guessed it, both of the groups did not significantly differ from one another. So then clearly highlighting is not effective at all and Donlosky actually rated highlighting as low utility. Now this makes a lot of sense because a lot of people highlight because it looks so nice, it looks so appealing, but in reality, highlighting actually makes no difference. It doesn't matter if the student next to you is using their pencil, but understanding more than you while you're highlighting using pink, using purple, using green, using all these creative colors, you make your notes look so appealing, but at the end of the day, you don't end up doing any better than the student who didn't take any notes. Now, personally, I don't like highlighting at all because it's really expensive. Like, think about it. You have to keep buying highlighters and highlighters and highlighters and highlighters. It's just a waste of money, and it doesn't help you actually instill that information into long-term memory. Now let's talk about the second most common method among students, which is rereading. Now, believe it or not, rereading is the most frequent method for students to use when they're studying for exams. Now, a research team that was led by a researcher named Karpike, I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly, but essentially what they did is they asked university students to write down every single study technique that they used. And you'd be surprised to know that 84% of the students wrote down that they used rereading as one of their study techniques. And from those 84% of people, 50 5% of those people actually wrote that rereading was the number one study technique that they used. That means that basically around half of the students that study nowadays use rereading as their number one most effective strategy. And you'd be surprised to see that actually Donlovsky rated it as low utility. Now, why did he rate it as low utility? Well, let me explain. Now, a very interesting article that I found was done in 1968. That's almost 50, well, actually, no, it's more than 50 years ago. That is 53 years ago. And what they found is that they essentially took a bunch of students and they gave them two articles to read. One was a 1500 word essay about making leather. Was it making leather? Yeah, a 1500 word article about making leather. And another one was a 750 word article about Australian history. And they split them up into four different groups. One group didn't read the articles at all. So that was the zero rereading group. Another group read it once, another group read it twice, and another group read it four times, and they would reread it right after they finished reading the last passage. And then after all the students finished, they waited 10 minutes and gave them the articles again, but removed 10% of the words. Now you'd actually be surprised to see 
see that the groups that read it twice versus the groups that read it four times had no difference at all and that both of them could only recall about maximum 45% of the words. Now this shows that rereading might be effective in helping you, you know, going from a 0% to a 45%, 50%. It might help you a little, but it will not help you get into that high score in your class. So this study is super important because it shows rereading is ineffective and it is low utility. Now, personally, I also don't like rereading because it takes so much time. Every time I'm studying and I'm rereading something, I'm like, oh my gosh, I literally hate this. Like there's no way I'm spending four hours rereading and rereading and rereading. And that's essentially, that makes so much sense. Like who likes rereading something multiple, multiple, multiple times? There's really no use in doing that. So before we talk about all these techniques, I want to talk about Ebbinghaus curve. Now, if you're not really understanding the words that I'm saying, you can feel free to follow along right here with my iPad animation. So essentially Ebbinghaus curve is how we forget things over time. So over time, our brain obviously works where, you know, you can't keep information for a very long period of time. So slowly, 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 our memory starts to deteriorate. But if we keep remembering that information at different intervals, that helps to restart the Ebbinghaus curve and helps us keep the information for actually a long period of time. Now, finally, let's talk about space repetition, which is one of the pillars of study techniques that Dunlowski actually talked about in his research article. Now, there's actually a very interesting research experiment that was done in 1979. So essentially what this group did is they took three different groups of students and they gave them a bunch of Spanish words that they needed to memorize. Group one was tested on their Spanish at six different sessions back to back on the exact same day. Group two was tested on their Spanish on six different sessions over a six day period. And finally, group three was tested on six different sessions that left 30 days between every single session. So you can imagine that they were tested over a very long period of time. Then this whole research team tested these groups 30 days after finishing their final test on the Spanish, and the results were very promising. Group three that split up their testing over six sessions, 30 days apart between each session, actually ended up performing the best with actually a 93% accuracy. The first group that had six back-to-back -back sessions actually ended up performing the worst with a 65% accuracy. Now this goes to show that space repetition helps you retain the information for a longer period of time. And not only that, but it helps you improve your scores and helps you actually perform better with group three performing at 93%. Now intuitively, this makes so much sense. I mean, obviously memorizing things for a longer period of time will help you perform better on your exam. But what I don't think a lot of people know is the big difference it actually makes versus the other study techniques. Like I said, highlighting and rereading, they're clearly not effective at all. Try to test yourself on small things every other day or every day, and that will help you retain the information for a longer period of time, more ways than you actually think. I want to talk about another experiment. So there was two groups of students that were given to learn the exact same thing, but one over an eight week period and one over a six month period. And they actually found that testing these students after they finished the course, whether that was the eight week one or the six month one, the students that took the six month course significantly did better than the students that were taking the eight week course. So this shows that space repetition is important, but the longer the interval and the longer time that you do it for, the better you're actually gonna perform. So it's best to start this technique, whether it's in school or in any studying, as quickly as possible and as early as possible because the later you start it, the smaller the effect will actually become. So this just goes to show that space repetition has a massive impact on the way that you study. And believe me guys, I learned this the hard way. Like I remember in first year, oh my gosh, that, that literally sucked. That time sucked because I used to spend like 12 hours every single day, like studying when it came to, you know, exam season and I didn't end up scoring well and it literally sucked. Like I literally hated myself because I was like, how do I improve? What the heck do I even do? until I came around in winter break and I was like, yo, I need to figure out a way to do better on my exams. And I came around space repetition and I realized how big of an effect it actually makes on your exams. And of course, no one's telling you to, you know, study four hours of the same content every single day. But if you do 15 minutes of the exact same thing or the exact same course over, you know, I don't know, like a four months period, then when that period is done, you're gonna know that information inside out. It's literally common sense. Studying things for a very long period of time helps you increase your retention and overall will help you increase and help you perform better on your actual 
actual exams. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, I really hope you guys did. Like the video down below. Subscribe if you guys want to see more content like this because it literally took me forever to find these articles because I tried to make this video as great as possible for you guys and whoever is watching at home because it did help me out a lot and I hope it does help you guys out a lot as well. Also, comment down below what study techniques you guys are currently using because I'm interested in see what you guys currently use. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Cheers. Now let's talk about the second most common now let's talk about the second most common method among students which is rereading